everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. We're glad you could be with us today. I'm Susan and this is Jim, my husband of 50 years. Wow. Whoa. whoa. That's some sort of a, man, that's, that's a milestone, it is a isn't milestone, it? Yeah. Think about that. 50 years, didn't, it didn't seem like that long. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, that's right. No, it's just like, I can just even remember just like yesterday. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, yeah. Okay, today we are going to talk about God's one another plan. And I believe as we go through this, you're going to see some things that will help you understand why it's so necessary, so important that you be in a body of believers. That's right. I agree. You know, I agree. some people, and, and I'm not getting on the folks, but in a way I am, you know, they think on Sunday morning, man, I've worked hard all week. I'm just going to watch, I'm just going to watch church on TV today. In fact, you know, now it's kind of, it's even appropriate. People will say, well, they'll, they'll sign on to their little Facebook thing and say, well, I've got to stop for church now. But what they really mean is they're just going to stream a broadcast into their home. And there's nothing wrong with that. But don't make a habit of that. That's right. Because you are very important in God's one another plan. And yeah. you're going to see that as we go through yeah, that's this. Right. Okay? Okay. Romans chapter 12, <coughs> verses 4 and 5. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another we are members of one another yeah i know see you always think of yourself as a member of a church right. or a member of a certain group a sorority or you know campfire group or something like that but here he's talking about the body of christ which is the most important organization ever mm -hmm. and he's saying that you are members of one another, another. that's right so so, you know, as, as a body. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For the, by the Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. So here again, you have a body, but it's not, it's, it's many together. Mm -hmm. Many together. Yeah. All the members make one body. That's right. Yeah. All right. And then verse 20, it says, now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. Mm -hmm. Many members, yet one body. So, and, and this is the kind of way it works. I read this, I don't even remember where I read this, but I'm going to take just a minute to yeah, read this, this because really this cool. is kind of what it's like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it says, after you get a paper cut, it's important that your body closes the cut or the wound so that you avoid getting an infection. There are three stages of wound healing to repair the cut. The stages are kind of like what you might go through if you tried to build a house. Mm -hmm. First, the site has to be prepared and planning begins. Special cells called neutrophils are called in to help. They attract other immune cells and help trap invaders. During the inflammatory phase, your body stops blood loss by clotting the blood and reducing blood flow. Lots of supervisors like proteins, blood cells, and antibodies are sent to the site. Macrophages are a critical part of this wound healing team. They come to clean up the site before the building can start. They eat the dead skin cells and other waste around the area. Once the wound is free of germs, the waste is cleaned up and the skin grows started, the macrophages and neutrophils start to leave. It's important that they leave because having inflammation for long periods of time can cause serious problems. Second, your body starts rebuilding the lost tissue and replacing bl broken blood vessels with fresh ones. At the house, this would be like the work of the plumbers and framers. Cells called fibroblasts provide the building materials to repair the tissue. New vessels are added that can help more blood reach the wound. And special cells start adding substances in preparation for more cells to be added. Cells start gathering at the edges of the wound and more and more added until they reach the cells gathering at the other side of the wound. And so that's the way it works. It, it, they, it, your body comes together by sending different ones 
in to help. Yeah, and, and you know, when, when you relate this to the body of Christ, you know, you can look at wherever you are involved in church. Right. And you can notice, you know, we, we talk about how um, be who you are. Mm -hmm. You can just notice how everybody that actually allows themselves to just be who they are contribute such an enormous um, thing to the body. You know, that, you know, I know that in our church you can just look at different people and you think, well, wow, but that's just who they are. Who they are. You know, it's not like they've got to pretend to be something to come to your aid in a certain situation. That's just who they are. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, you can see from this, you know, like when you look at this, you know, like getting a paper cut on your finger, what happens in your own physical body to mm -hmm. get that fixed. Okay, and then and then just take that over into the your spirit life and think about, you know, people in the body of believers that you gather with and how important each person is to in the process of causing wholeness to come to each one. That's right. And here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. If you aren't in the right body, okay. then you will never be able to fulfill your destiny. Yeah. Yeah, you got to grow. Just, you got to get planted and grow. See, the Bible says God sits each one in the body as he as sees, he sees fit. Fit. In other words, you, you know, like everywhere there's a lot of local church bodies. Mm -hmm. And each, each of those church bodies has a different function. They're going to have a, a different uh, um, slant on what they're supposed to do. Exactly, yeah. You know? they, they'll all have some powerful influence in the community. That's right. And so, uh, um, but, but you, you know, you might, well, you know, I've had people say, well, I, you know, you say, well, where do you go to church? Why do you go there? Well, that's where my mom and daddy go. So they yeah. survive. And I say, yeah, but where does God want you to go? Sometimes that's enough reason if your mom and dad go well, there. I, I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just saying. saying. I'm know, just saying. I know, you know, uh, um, well, anyway. Yeah. But you, you're supposed to, to be planted where God plants you. That's right. Because you, you know, that's, where, that's where your gifts and callings, and, and, and one, when you're born again, God puts gifts and callings within you. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're planted in the body that he chooses, that's where your gifts and callings will, will really begin to blossom. Right, because you have a contribution to make. That's right. Whether you know it or not, there's a place for you. And, you know, the, the saying now is we're all better together. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. That's right. It really is. That's right. And we got, we've got several areas that we're going to talk about here of influence that you might have with your body. That's right. right? We're, we call this God's one another plan. Mm -hmm. One another plan. Yeah. All right. First thing that, that we want to do is God wants us to admonish one another. Mm -hmm. You want to read that scripture? This is Romans 15 and it's verse 14. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Okay. That's good. Right. Passion translation says it this way. My dear brothers and sisters, I am fully convinced of your genuine spirituality. Though I've ne not met you, I know that each of you are stuffed full of God's goodness, that you are richly supplied with all kinds of revelation knowledge, and that you are empowered to effectively instruct one another. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, you know, you think about how, you know, just like, in the secular world, just in the academic world. Mm -hmm. Some people are just more gifted in math than English, right? Mm, that's right. And so you, you wouldn't go to the math expert for English help, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same way right here he's talking about how every person has something. Yes. You know, there's something in you um, about truth that's best from you than somebody else. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. And I, I just like how he, how he expressed this in that Passion Translation. 
I know each of you are stuffed full of God's goodness, <laughs> richly supplied with all kinds of revelation knowledge, and you're empowered to effectively instruct one another. That's right. That's good. All right, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. But to admonish, but it says here, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Mm -hmm. That comes first, and then comes the teaching and admonishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you've got some things down here. I guess these are explanations, like to reprove. It says Gent gently but earnestly, right. you know. That's admonishing. That's, that's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Counsel someone against something to be avoided. You know, you can say things in a spirit that's mm -hmm. easy to receive, or you can say things and they're hard to receive. So when you admonish a person, you've got to be so sensitive that you're saying it so that this person can move forward mm -hmm. you know well you know here's the thing about it to counsel someone against something to be avoided you know you see somebody and and and, and you it looks like they're taking a, a path here and you just sense that the end of this is not going to be good right and so you go to that person and you don't do it you know with a no superior <laughs> attitude and like you know help. i know something else. no you 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 gently say, let me, let me share something with you here. I, I see that it looks like you're headed in this direction right here, but maybe, maybe I want to give you something to think about. Maybe you need to make a turn <laughs> and go this way. Mm -hmm. That's admonishing somebody. Yeah. Helping yeah. them stay on the right path. Mm -hmm. You know, as parents, we uh, have many, many opportunities as your, as your children are growing up. Mm -hmm. you, you have many opportunities to admonish them yeah, you do. On, along those lines about, you know, whether, what, maybe, maybe you need to, you know, you see them that they get, start getting with, with a, a group of, and, yeah. and you're thinking, this is not good. And so then you, you, you just admonish them to, you know, and, and mm -hmm. as it turned out, it, it, would, it would not have been good. The end of that would not have been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, it, t it requires some sensitivity to be able to impart instruction in such a way that it does admonish and That's not, right. you know. Not condemn. Yeah, not condemn. Yeah, it's, I don't think everybody can do that so well. That, well, that's true. Some are going to be much more efficient at doing that sort of thing than others. That's right, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one is we are we are called to serve one another. You want to read that in Galatians? Yeah, it says, this is 5 and it's verse 13. <coughs> you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. That's good. Serve. Through love serve one serve another. Serve one another, right. Yeah. Okay, are you going to read that passion stuff? The passion translation says it this way. Beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit. But don't view this wonderful freedom as an opportunity to set up a base of operations in the natural realm. Freedom means that we become so completely free of self-indulgence that we become servants of one another, expressing love in all that we do. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus his last days on earth, one of the very last things he did was he took, um, was it a towel? He wrapped it around himself mm -hmm. as an apron and then he went around and he washed the disciples' feet. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he was showing them was about serving one yes, another. Was. You know, you, that, that's just, it's necessary that as a body of believers that we learn how to serve each other. That's right. And here's the thing about it. <clears throat> the reason this can work so well is, is once you understand that in the body of Christ, 
no one is more important than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you may be a, 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 a multimillionaire, but you're no one more important than the guy that's just, just barely getting along. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have a PhD, and the other person is a high school dropout. You're no more important than they are. We are all equally as important. That's right. And that's the reason we can serve one another. Yeah. That's God's one another plan. That's, it, that's right. Yeah. Yep. That's, it just, it just, it's good to point this out, though, and refresh your mind to it every once in a while, and, and you realize, well, wow, you know, not only is the body important to me, but I'm, I'm, I also have a part to play. That's right. That's right. And we are to serve one another. Mm -hmm. Serve one another. Um, Let's it, talk about forbearing. Forbearing one another, okay? That's probably one you like the most, okay. right? <laughs> you read that in Ephesians. Okay, it's Ephesians 4, verses 1 and 2. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Okay, now bearing with one another. That's that like, means, is that like putting up with each it other? It means or making allowances for others' mistakes. Okay. It also could mean looking beyond their faults and seeing their need. Yeah. So in in one way, you could think of it as putting up with each other. Yeah. But it's beyond that. It is beyond because that. Because it's, it's the attitude of being helpful in that person's life. That's right. As, as you, you know, you yeah. forbear with them. And We're, see, this, this is one of those things that takes patience because he tells you here, he says that with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, it's not like you're going to suffer. No. But he's talking about, you know, this is going to take a little time. You're going to have to be willing to do, to be in it for the long haul. You know, when you see this person and, you know, you know, assign yourself the the job of hey I'm gonna I'm gonna help them I'm gonna come alongside them and I'm gonna encourage them and yep they've made mistakes but we're gonna that's okay we're gonna we're just gonna love them right. and work with them that's right yeah. I mean that's what you do mm -hmm. that's what you do because you know why because nobody's, nobody's perfect nobody's perfect <laughs> that's right nobody's nobody perfect. no you, you need to keep in mind. That sometimes you make mistakes. That's right. Sometimes I make mistakes. So, you know, that's just that's just the way that it is. And you know, sometimes people act strange because they have needs in their life. That's that's right. And that's what he says right here: looking beyond their faults and seeing their need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's right. what you do is as being part of God's one another plan. That's right. Now, then this one right here is really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving, forgiving, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Oh, oh how, just like God forgave me. That's right. So, in other words, God forgave you when you didn't deserve to be forgiven. Yep. God forgave you before you ever asked to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, the very opposite of forgiving to me is like holding on to something or, or like carrying a grudge even. Mm -hmm. And so you can, it's easy to just look, look at yourself and, and you can think, you know, uh, about your relationships and you can see how, you know, forgiving is going to be that, that one factor that either makes or breaks a person. That's right. Well, you know, the thing, about, forgi the thing about forgiveness is... It's is, a choice. It's what? A it's, choice. It is a choice. It's not a feeling. You know, a lot yeah. of people think, well, yeah. well, when I feel like it, I will. No, no, no. No, no, no. Because you may never feel like it. Uh, right. But you... You, you for, forgiveness is an act of your will. It's just a decision you make. That's right. You just choose. 
you know, and even, you know, the, these people in your body of believers, wherever you are, there may be some just real scoundrels. Forgive them. Forgive them. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And just, you know, that the kids sang that song. It was a Disney song about let it go. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to just do. Let go, just right. let it go. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, okay. verse 14 and 15. This is really good. But if you forgive me in their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, uh-oh, uh, but. But. If you do not forgive me in their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So listen to me. Unforgiveness is not worth it. Mm -mm. Like for instance, if you hold, if somebody did something to you, I don't know what it was. They said something bad about you. They stole money from you. I, I don't know. Yeah, this this doesn't have to do with whether it's justified or not. No, no, no. It, it could be really a bad thing. That's right. And so, you know, in the natural, you would have, you, you know, but but according to this. No matter what they did, you have to forgive them. Mm -hmm. You have to forgive them. No matter, no matter what they did, you have to forgive them. And the reason being is unforgiveness. Now listen to me when I say this. Unforgiveness stops your walk with God. Mm -hmm. It's just like a clogged pipe. It is. It is. You, can, you cannot afford unforgiveness. See, the thing about unforgiveness is, it doesn't affect the person that you have unforgiveness towards because they don't even know it. Or care. The only thing is it's eating you alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you and I, you know people, I know people that in their life they have unforgiveness towards someone. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious that they do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but, you know, see, Richard Roberts and his wife have talked about this a lot. And she describes it like this. It, unfor if I have unforgiveness towards you, it's like I'm going to just go ahead and I'm just going to drink from that cup. And it's poisoning me and not affecting the person I've got the unforgiveness right. for. And so, so you can see that as your motive. But right here to me, the very best motive is you want your Heavenly Father to forgive you. Right. And He tells us, Forgive them. Right. You know, and Peter was, was it Peter that says, how many times do I yeah. have to do that? And Jesus said, and Peter said, well, how about seven? <laughs> he goes, nope, seven times 70. You just ne you're never going to end this. This is a daily choice to make. That's right. I forgive. You know, and sometimes you may have to say it more than once. Yeah, and you you probably will yeah. to yourself. That's right. Uh, and, and, but, but, the thing is, we absolutely cannot afford, we cannot afford to hold unforgiveness towards someone because it, it's, it, 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 it is, a, is a wall between me and God. Mm -hmm. And look at what Jesus said. This is uh, Luke 23, 34. Okay. He said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And you think about that. The Lord of glory, you know, the, the creator of the universe. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right, they were killing him. And they were killing him. Yeah. Yeah, we're saying, you know, these, these acts that people commit against each other very well can be really awful and bad and probably are. But even though they are, as a believer, it's our job to... Forgive, you know, forgive like, it, let it go. Uh, I'm reminded of in the book of Acts, Stephen. Yeah. They were stoning him, stoning him, and all he had, all he had done was preach the gospel. That's right. They were stoning him, and he said, as they were stoning him, Father, don't hold this sin against them. In other words, what was he saying? I forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. So forgiveness mm -hmm. in the life of a believer is so very important. You and I cannot afford the luxury of unforgiveness. That's right. It's part of God's one another plan. That's right. That's yep. right. Okay. okay. We are to comfort one another. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. Comfort one another. Yeah. 
And you know, no matter who you are, where you are, you know a person that is just gifted that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like they came here already programmed to give comfort. You know, and so, you know, but even those of us that are maybe not gifted in such a way can still do that. Yes, we can. You know, it it'll take a more effort on our part if we're not just kind of bent that way. But each one of us, it's important for us to know, well, let's comfort. Yeah, let's do and that. we can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes <laughs> comfort, you say, you know, he says, comfort one another with these words. In other words, it's the word of God that will bring comfort. Yeah, it it's always will. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes too, comforting someone may just be a hug. That's right. May just be, a, and you know, it, comforting someone could be just sitting down beside them and holding their hand. Mm -hmm. That's right. It could be that. Uh, you know, it, it may be something you, that you don't really say anything. You're just there. Mm -hmm. You're just there. Right. And they know that you're there and they can lean on you. Mm -hmm. So comforting one another is important. It's very important. All right. What about edifying one another? You want to read that? Okay, this is First Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. So, see, we need to, we need to build, build each other up. We need to build you up. Yeah, listen to the Passion Translation. Right. It says, because of this, and this, again, it's First Thessalonians 5.11. Because of this, encourage the hearts of your fellow believers. Support one another just as you have already been doing. So we're supposed to build one another up. Mm -hmm. That's right. These are a few things of God's one another plan. That's right. So mm -hmm. Susan, I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, you can contact us here at the bottom line. Thank you so much for your continued financial support. We appreciate it. Remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, disciples indeed. indeed. You should know, know the, the truth, truth and, and the, the truth, truth will set, set you free. free.